It's wonderful to have Stefan Bernison with us today as one of our keynotes at the Virtual Summit 2015. Stefan is such a unique and good-hearted individual with a kind spirit but fierce commitment to supporting biodiversity within our realm of green roofing and ecological design. His long-standing research in Switzerland and other parts of Europe has greatly promoted the cause and Aramis and I first met him in 2005 at the excellent congress that he organized in Basel. We were introduced to his fascinating work through a whirlwind tour of the rooftops in the city and across the bucolic Swiss countryside. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Stefan Bernaisen, working for Zurich University of Applied Sciences and I'm talking for you today about biodiversity aspects on green roofs. And to get an impression about the spatial approach and what is potential of green roofs here in Basel, my hometown, you can have a look around here in the area and you will see plenty of different green roofs. And as I said, the topic today will be biodiversity aspects and we go later in the details together. In an educational project in Poland I have once the wonderful experiments working with kids from a kindergarten. They try to show us their vision of a green roof when they have a drawing competition. Some of them wanted to have an apple garden on the roof, others likely the Hubert. I was never sure if he was more afraid of a spider or if he really sees the option of a biologist, what is the potential of a green roof for biodiversity. Anyhow, there are personal approaches and different perspectives where green roofs can be seen and what you can achieve with a green roof, like the tea garden in the Swiss Alps. Maybe a bit like Hubert, I was dreaming and seeing the potential being on a green roof what kind of wildlife can be established on these habitats? I was interested to study this. Today we are working on the biodiversity topic in a small team of six scientists, such as biogeographs, orchid specialists, soil specialists and entomologists. Telling what our findings are so far, I want to focus on the following aspects. So what kind of species can benefit from green roofs in general? What kind of ecosystem is a green roof? What kind of green roof design is beneficial for urban wildlife? And at the end, some information about the background of the status of green roofs at the moment in Switzerland and in Basel. And some of our raising questions, the size of green roofs and metapopulation aspects. Since most of the green roofs are above the ground, Animals and plants have to be somehow mobile enough to reach these new oases in the sky. Obviously, we can think about birds and other very mobile flying species, such as insects, some groups like grasshoppers, butterflies, bees, beetles and others, they easily can reach green roofs. But as well as spiders, snails, passively brought on the roofs, we can find on these new habitats. For example, spiders we can find on green roofs because they can fly with the thread when they are juveniles. Birds on green roofs, we can see what are the activities, what is the reason they get onto the roofs. So mostly they feed on insects or they feed on seeds they find there. In springtime, they gather nesting material from dry grasses, for example, that still are on the green roof from the last year. They even find safe places because there are no cats usually on green roofs. And we even found ground nesting species that are starting to nest on green roofs if the conditions fit to them. So in general, we can categorize animals benefiting from green roofs based on how they use green roofs 
as part of the habitat mosaic in urban areas. So we can put them somehow in a green roof process correlation model and group them into four animal groups. Animal group one is living temporarily on green roofs using nectar sources or feeding on insects like birds or bees and butterflies. Animal group two is living permanent on a green roof we can say they live in the vegetation, such as grasshoppers, for example, or snails. Animal group 3 is living in between the vegetation or on the ground, on the surface of the substrate, such as ground living beetles, also spiders, for example, can live here. Spiders also can be in animal group 2, living in the, in the vegetation. Animal group 4 means these are mostly small animals living in the ground, such as columbola or larvae of beetles, for example, living permanently in the soil. So what are the key factors determining a green roof ecosystem? Green roofs are very much depending on the substrate thickness. Shallow substrate, like on this sedum-dominated green roof, tend to be species poor and cannot provide permanent living spaces for the potential animal groups we just talked about. The more substrate you can give on a green roof, the wider its range of plant communities and of course those animal groups can, that can be established like herbs and grasses. So completing the ecosystem means you get substrate thickness up to 12 or 15 centimeters where you create a living space for spiders, beetles, butterflies and with the grasses as well for grasshoppers. So the main lesson we learned about the ecosystem on the green roof is the more substrate and the more water holding capacity you can give, the more biomass you can give and the more complete ecosystem you can create on the green roof. Closing the basic ecosystem analysis, we see that we miss specific groups like worms, wood looses, and ants, beside others, that cannot survive on typical extensive green roofs because of the lack of permanent humidity and options to move deeper in the ground in dry periods. This brings us to the story of the lapwing as a typical bird that is connected with the green roof ecosystem, a highly endangered species in Switzerland since their population decreased from around 1,000 pairs down to just 100, they began to breed on green roofs like this, very shallow, sedum and moss dominated green roofs. They identified green roofs as safe places without ground predators such as foxes, cats and company. And we found so far eight locations in Switzerland with nests of lapwings on green roofs. Some of them in central Switzerland, one is close to Bern, and one location is even directly at the airport of Zurich. So the chicks of the lapwings after they hatched, they have to survive independent from the parents on the green roofs, since the lapwing parents doesn't bring the food to the nestlings. They are adapted in nature to find, like chickens, uh, their own food on the ground. So it's very important that the young birds find enough phonistical biomass on the roof to survive. And we saw that in most of the cases, after four to eight days, the hatchling just died off. We never saw a surviving lapwing young bird on the green roofs where we found uh, the lapwings nesting. So we saw we have to try out what we learned about green roofs. The more biomass we have, the more substrate we have, we can create a higher ecosystem value. So we can create meadows with herbs and grasses based on substrate thickness. And we attract more insects, beetles, spiders, many more animal groups that can provide food for young birds. 
you can see a running chick looking for food on green roof. And we were successful with that uh, small design approach on these green roofs. Uh, we had a, one main location in Emmen, it's close to Lucerne, uh, where we could improve the green roof where the labyrinths were nesting and had a big success in the last years that we could establish here a small colony of four to six pairs of lapwings and in the last years they could raise around 10 chicks to the age um, of a young adult bird. That means they have to survive 42 days average on the green roof, finding their own food uh, and after that they can fly by themselves down to the ground and from that point on they live like the ones that have been starting the life already on the ground. Going back to Basel, we could study here a deeper ecophonistical approach to see how we can mimic near natural ground habitats such as river banks as we had in historical or even prehistoric times in Basel, located at the river banks of the Rhine, the main river of Central Europe. Together with interested construction managers, we could establish different materials such as big stones, sandy gravel, and we could install some pilot roofs like here on the hospital roof at the university in Basel. Now we are in the center of this biodiverse green roof on the hospital here and we will show you some of the details here. We see according to the riverbanks we have some gravel and moss area. Followed by some typical areas where sedum and some other herbs are dominating. Going to a crossover to areas where grasses increase but still a lot of sedum coverage. Here we have a little friend. He doesn't want to be seen. Ah. Yeah. One of the early ladybugs. I'm going further to some really more dense grass communities that are early growing since we are still in early April. Giving in total a very diverse habitat that reminds to a riverbank and holding a lot of species that are naturally living in riverbanks. Here we found a typical beetle living on a green roof. This is a carabit beetle. We're studying at the moment beetle communities, so the amount of how many species living on different green roof types and this specifically designed green roof here holds more than 100 different beetle species. Beetles are the most species rich insect groups, so we can say the most about the habitat quality of green roofs. And since we're designing these roofs as a river habitat, as a replacement of a river habitat, we are interested to, to see if we can find typical beetles living in nature also on riverbanks. Here we can see another wild bee species. 
feeding on this blue plant. So if you have another nectar source, like the smaller wild bee we just saw before. Out of all insect groups we just showed you before that can live on green roof, we use the beetles as our best bioindicators to see the habitat conditions. Especially the ground living beetles uh, that we can easily trap with our pitfall traps uh, we were looking for. Usually we put 10 pitfall traps per investigation site. On a pilot roof in Zurich that we built uh, on the Europe Alley, we differed into several microhabitats we could install there to get more detailed information. What are the needs of beetles to live on them? So we used some larger stone, sandy gravel and logs on these roofs and want to see if we can have in our sampled materials to prove that we have on specific food types uh, from beetles that we find like the carnivores, like the herbivores and the different uh, plant types they're eating uh, if we really can design our roofs in very much detail. An overview and also an option working with beetles we, uh, we use in Mexico City to show what biodiversity can be on all the green roofs we so find so far in Mexico City. And there were 54 beetle, different beetle species we could find there. So we try to learn from natural habitats if we think about our design of a green roof. So we see that river banks and other dry and dynamic habitats in nature that have similar conditions like we can find on green roofs. Even in a desert or a prairie can be a habitat we can think about what are the plants, what are the biodiversity uh, living there in these habitats if we can bring them on the roof. So we try working together with architects seeing the surrounding area and bring these elements and habitats that we find in the surrounding onto the roofs and try to go even in the detail on the roof. Like here on an example we worked out for Make Architects in London to support the National Endangered Red Black Red Star in the UK. We made a design that even the people working in that building can get access on the roof and benefit if they see the Black Red Star in, on this roof. Well, you also can see, beside the dry habitats, we also can mimic wetlands on a green roof. So, if it's some areas, you can define very wet conditions. Like here, we have nearly pond areas uh, where we have wetland species combined side by side with dry meadow species. A very dramatic example we can find on that roof, that is the lake water plant moss in Zurich. We call that a world wonder of ecological construction. It was built in 1914 and it holds at the moment 10 native orchid species that are many of these uh, extinct in the surroundings here. Uh, these three roof units hold the most uh, valuable populations of, for example, Anacamptis morio, uh, very endangered orchid species in Switzerland. And we could see that these roofs over 100 years became a safe haven for biodiversity. So most of these species got extinct in the areas where agriculture changed, many buildings were built and on the roof they kept safe and nowadays they even can spread back into the sites on the ground. People like the site, it's very popular to see it and give an impression what green roofs can benefit for urban wildlife. The findings regarding biodiversity aspects on green roofs and the implementation 
is related to the actual status of green roofs in Switzerland and in detail how green roofs have to be designed in Basel. The initial studies in Basel, as we show here the results, are based on the species we found from the beetles. We here can see the total number of beetle species on the upper column and we compared that and when made uh, later in the details how much red dotable glyphs we could find and in fact we could systematically prove that red dotable and red, red species also can establish on green roofs and this brought us to the point that we could work it out with the planning department that green roofs has to look like these examples like our pilot on the hospital roof so that we have to vary the substrate thickness on the green roofs and we have to use local soils they can be additionally mixed a bit with technical substrate like lava pumice but in general the green roof have to uh, provide habitats for wildlife in Basel so you can see here in the picture as uh, how the substrate thickness really is defining the habitat condition on the green roof so at the moment we have it in the building code in Basel that new flat roof buildings have to have a green roof even retrofitting and temporary flat roof buildings have to have a green roof it's a really standard of roof coverage at the moment and we say you have to put substrate thickness like 8, 12 and 15 centimeters uh, on your green roof you're not allowed to have it all with the same thickness and as I said some substrate composition should be based on local materials so all in all in Switzerland green roofs are mandatory on new buildings with flat roofs in the biggest cities and the smaller cities coming one by one adding also this uh, ecological compensation measure in the urban sustainable planning strategy somehow I guess the biodiversity approach is reflecting that most of the green roofs are not visible for the owners at the moment in Switzerland so we can design them not for aesthetical but ecological purposes and give back this way a lot of space to urban wildlife coming now to our last uh, point of the presentation uh, as the size of green roofs and the meta population aspects this question was raised by a finding of a very rare grasshopper species that was even unknown for the northern part of Switzerland so far and the species Aeropus thalassinus occurred on Dukey shopping tent, the green roof so it was known so far from the southern part of Germany southern part of Switzerland and the region of Geneva on the left hand side of the picture and as we see here we find now since the time it first occurs on the green roof in Basel also in the ground uh, sites in the area of Basel that's in the north part of Switzerland and now we're looking for the numbers of the individuals of these grasshopper species on the Stücki roof trying to find out if the population is stable the same question we have with another grasshopper species in Zurich on the roofs we already showed you on the Europa Alley this grasshopper species is living all over Switzerland in the big river valleys the Europa, Europa Alley was a replacement habitat of the riverbank of the seal and the railway sidings we had just close by and the grasshopper species lives in these railway sidings and since last year four years after installation uh, we could now prove that these grasshopper species reach the roofs and we found around 30 individuals on one of the roofs there were about 25 individuals so we can guess now it's kind of a source habitat and others and this is, will be our in interesting question how big are the roofs that these grasshoppers can establish and how many individuals does uh, a side population needs that it can be stable we try to prove this also with the larvae occurrence to prove the uh, reprodu reproduction 
of the species on the roofs. So you can see there are plenty of questions still remaining about green roofs and biodiversity and I hope we could introduce you into that topic and give you some ideas of designs and animals that you can support with an adequate green roof planning. And at the end I want to thank very much to Linda and Aramis Velasquez for this fantastic initiative to get uh, this event done and hopefully or, and if you have any questions please uh, send it to our research group and we are open to support any ideas in regard of biodiversity on green moves.